Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I'm going to talk about proof of reserves. What are they, what are they used for, and why, why they're important? Well, so first of all, what is a proof of reserve? Well, proof of reserve is basically a way to prove that you have a certain amount of Bitcoins. Now, this is not exactly foolproof, but you can do something like sign uh, a message with some private keys uh, that, uh, that correspond to addresses that are known to hold a certain amount of Bitcoins. That's the basic idea. It's, it's to prove, okay, well, we hold at least this many Bitcoins and therefore we are solvent. Now, this, is, this has traditionally been something that a lot of uh, uh, people in Bitcoin care about, but it turns out that the customers of exchanges don't care quite as much because they continue to put money in, um, either because they are traders and they get their money in and they get their money out and you know they're, they're good after that, uh, or they're not as sophisticated technically and they just sort of like leave their money on Coinbase or something like that and don't really care to know whether or not they're solvent. Um, uh, what, what's interesting though is that Blockstream came up with a proof of reserve protocol, uh, which is really interesting uh, because uh, it, it can at least prove that you have access to the keys or access to someone that has those keys. Uh, but uh, especially for something with uh, you know complicated multi-sig scripts or something like that, this is a very uh, good way to do it. So for example, uh, what, uh, the, what the protocol says is, um, take all of your UTXOs. These are uh, Bitcoins in circulation that belong to you. Um, so you take those and you sign a transaction that spends all of those plus one illegal input. And this is to make sure that it doesn't hit the chain and you, know, you end up moving all of this. You, you don't wanna mess with the security that's already on there, uh, but sign all of those uh, except for one that's uh, an illegal input and basically uh, publish that transaction. And that's that's it. That will uh, show that you have reserves and all that stuff. Now, it can be kind of bad in the sense that you are, especially if it's some sort of like complicated multi-sig or something like that, you're revealing um, you know, what kind of uh, security procedures you have around. So something like MuSig, uh, not, not, well, MuSig would definitely help, uh, but something like um, uh, like Taproot or Graftroot would be really useful there because you can have one path for proof of reserve and uh, other paths for everything else. Um, but you know, like si signing off on something like this will show um, at least the conditions under which your coins can get along. So that that that's kind of a little bit of a drawback. But the idea is you are proving that you have a certain amount of bitcoins. And uh, of course, that doesn't prove uh, that that much in the sense that you can get somebody else to, um, uh, you know, produce this thing. Like you can you, you can ha uh, pay a whale to sign something, and uh, and basically they can sign it, and uh, you know, you you it looks like you had the money, but it's really the whale that does. So um, it, it can be bad in that way. Um, and the other way in which uh, proof of reserves doesn't really prove anything sometimes is that you don't really know the company's liabilities, right? Like they might have accounts, uh, like if you're an exchange, you might uh, prove that you have 100 Bitcoin in reserve. Well, if you have 200 Bitcoin in liabilities, you're still insolvent. It's, um, it's hard to prove the liability thing. Um, and this is where it gets, it gets kind of tricky because it, it really is... Um, a fundamental flaw of centralized entities is that they, they you, you can't really prove everything. Um, and, uh, and you can try certainly, and, uh, and there may be ways to do that, but there, there's no real interest in doing that because for the centralized entity, they don't really want, uh, like this is information that nobody really needs to know per se. And, uh, and it doesn't really gain them that much, uh, at least in the market. A lot of people don't really care if an exchange is solvent or not, as long as they can get in and out, uh, which is kind of a bad mentality. It's a tragedy of common situation. 
Anyway, that's what proof of reserves is. Hopefully that helps you. Um, and hopefully you as a consumer can start demanding that exchanges um, you know, provide proof of reserves before you do, you do things with them. Uh, certainly as exchanges become more popular and more numerous, um, this can be one of the things that distinguish them. But who knows, un un unless you, the market, uh, the customer, to start demanding this stuff, uh, none of these places are actually going to provide it. Anyway, hope that helps you. This song is done.